we have kind of a historic moment here tonight in that the very first year of the Funk Fellowship's Conservation Plus Tech course is coming to a close. I know that the students really want to get into their presentations. They have some, I know we just had some fantastic presentations ahead of us. Uh, each one of these student teams have been partnered with a organization working in conservation uh, in the real world worked for the entire spring semester. We are Team 4, the team behind Empower AR. As a small team, each of us has the opportunity to gain hands-on experience on all aspects of the project, running the mission of empowering the next, gener next generation of conservationists. Good evening, everyone. We are Team Envision, and for this design challenge, we partner with Oakland Civic Design Studio to reimagine Clinton Park. We are Team Telephants, and we have been working with the partner organization, Center for Wildlife Studies in India. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We are Algae Alert. We are Team Cal Sound. We are the Shark Seekers. Despite by the ambitious missions of mission of our partner organization, High Impact, we were motivated to tackle the Harmony question. How might we use immersive technologies to educate and motivate new generations to take action on the current unsustainable race of deforestation and species loss? The most widely used immersive technology we're talking about here in education are virtual reality and augmented reality, and VR or AR in short. And we decided to choose AR for our project because it is often more user friendly to create more accessible and easier to experience compared to VR, which will hopefully allow our design solution to have impact the world audience. How might we promote conservation, civic engagement, and celebrate the socio-cultural diversity of Clinton Park? In our reimagination of Clinton Park, we've taken a biocultural approach to celebrate the stories of the local community. We did so to foster meaningful human nature interactions across generations. Our lighted pathways, for example, encourage parkgoers to visit every corner of the park and improves nighttime accessibility. Our geocache offers an opportunity for community members to share their stories and learn about others, enhancing personal ties to Clinton Park. Finally, our symbolic birdhouse designs, which connect the stories of immigrant families to the movement and migration of birds, are a visual reminder of the ways in which we coexist. How might we leverage the early detection sensor system to build a passive deterrent system that farmers can rely on at night to protect against elephant conflicts. So this brings us to our solution, which is a solar powered wind torch, torch meaning flashlight. This mimics the presence of humans at night to scare elephants away. One of the core values we had discussed as a team going into the design process was that we needed to be both respectful and open to the ideas of the tribe and that we didn't want to force any solution our partners were not comfortable with implementing. And so we decided to shift our focus and our how might we to something quite different. And so we moved away from our focus of mitigation towards a mindset of empowerment and access. And this brought us to our new how might we. We decided to create a solution which would empower the Hoopa Valley community to access intra-tribe cyanobacterial information and demystify its meaning. This meant increasing access to information and its interpretation for different demographics How might we help marine resource managers, researchers, policymakers, and the general public see the impacts of noise pollution in the ocean and provide a clear, holistic way of synthesizing information and visualizing ocean sounds? Our paper's main value stems from the fact that it provides a comprehensive review of the soundscapes and its applications, both of which are novel ideas. Our paper also has a section in which we discuss how the technology in this field, including our prototype, is evolving and can better serve marine resource managers and other stakeholders. In addition to providing our literature review to NOAA to be shared with their stakeholders, we've included it on our website so that we can increase the accessibility of soundscape knowledge to all users. How might we create and implement new ways to coalesce data sources on shark catch? After finaling our research, we came up with three main areas of focus for our project that touch on all aspects of the issue we are hoping to solve. Through engaging with citizen science, we can collaborate with the general public. Gaining knowledge from them will also make them more aware of the issue at hand. Through education, we can target fishermen and educate them on the dangers of overfishing 
And lastly, through the creation of a social media web scraper tool that uses an algorithm to mine shark data from different social media platforms, we're hoping shark stewards can use this in the near future.